In this video, Glenn and I are going to walk you through how to set up EpiServer AB testing using self-optimizing blocks. If you have EpiServer version 8 or later, this feature will be available for you. We're always recommending EpiServer to everybody, um, but I think, I think most people know this, but our website is on EpiServer. So we practice what we preach. We really we, we use it in-house. Um, we try out new things with it. Mm -hmm. And as new features come out, we kind of workshop them on our own <laughs> website before we recommend them to clients. And one example is the new um, self-optimizing blocks and A-B testing that they have. And we're trying it out on our um, homepage. But do you want to talk a little bit about, on the back end, why that's a really cool feature? So one of the cool A-B testing features with Epi Server is um, the self-optimizing block, which essentially lets a content editor put in multiple variations of different content blocks. And um, through some algorithms that Epi Server automatically runs, it'll serve up different content to different markets, which is pretty straightforward A-B. But the kicker here is that in an automatic way, Epi Server will know when a user sees a particular piece of content if a conversion is completed, if they visit the page you want them to visit, it'll automatically scale how often that piece of content is seen up to the point where the most optimized block, the one with the highest conversion rate, is the one that's permanent and it'll just automatically publish that for you. It's very cool. And we're using it on our website. We're using self-optimizing blocks to determine which slides in our carousel users are actually clicking on so that eventually we could get rid of the carousel since user experience shows that most users don't click through to the entire carousel. In order to get self-optimizing blocks on your website, your developer will have to install a package via NuGet. This package is called EpiServer CMS Add-ons Blocks and is available via the EpiServer NuGet feed. Once that is installed, your editors will gain access to a new block type. To show you how this works, I'm going to go into one of our content areas and create a new block. From our block list, we are going to find a block of type self-optimizing block. This block by itself does not contain any properties that are going to be seen by visitors to your website. Rather, you are going to set up a goal, which is a target page that you want to test conversions to, and variations, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's go ahead and put in some properties here. We'll choose a goal page. And we'll go ahead and create this before adding our variations. Now that we've created our self-optimizing block, you'll notice at the bottom of our content area, this little icon. This icon indicates that a self-optimizing block has been placed in here. Let's go to edit it. Now that we've set up our self-optimizing block, we need to populate it with our variants. Variants can be any set of blocks that you would like to A-B test. You can use as many as you want here, or as little as two. So I'm going to go into our block library and choose a few to use as variants. Let's go to carousel. I'll use these two as an example. And as you start to add blocks here, you'll notice that some stats start to populate. The purpose of self-optimizing blocks is to give marketers and CMS editors the ability to do quick A-B testing. The way this works in EpiServer self-optimizing blocks is that the CMS will choose at random, based on visitor statistics, which block to show. So although I added two variants here, EpiServer will determine, based on its algorithms, which ones to show to each individual visitor. Since this is a new block, it's going to start by going directly down the middle. Half users will see my experience design block, and half will see the web development block. But as users start to interact with these blocks and navigate through the site, particularly hitting our goal page, EpiServer will automatically adjust and scale who sees which block. So I'm going to jump to our live site to show you an example of what an active A-B testing campaign looks like with self-optimizing blocks. So here we're going to look at our first block on our live site, 
which is a self-optimizing block. And when I go to edit it, you're going to see that this particular campaign has been running for quite some time now with three variants. Interestingly enough, out of these three variants, they all have pretty equal success in reaching our target page. But to kind of highlight what's going on here, uh, you'll see different stats for each variant with a relative comparison of conversion probability, an approximate stat on how likely it is that visitors will see this block, and a raw number of exposures of the number of times that users have seen that particular variant. So with these numbers in mind, you're able to start to kind of synthesize which blocks are effective and which can be removed from this particular test. So there you have it. That's our explanation of EpiServer A-B testing using self-optimizing blocks. If you're interested in learning more about how to use these, anything from strategy to implementation, contact Adage Technologies.